We lift our eyes to you. We have come. Yes, Lord. your song to the Lord, release the song of your heart, we have come to meet with you, the King of kings, the King of kings, the King of kings, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The heavens declare the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, for the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. So King of glory, come in. We welcome you in. We welcome you in. King of glory, come in. King of glory. Oshaya, let every heart be lifted up. Let every head be lifted up. Lifted up. Let the songs of glory. Let the songs of glory be lifted up. Roshaya. Koyana Namahaya. Take over, Lord. Roshaya Naramo Koyaya. As we lift you up. Thank you, Lord. We lift you up, Lord. We lift you up, Jesus. For you said if you be lifted up from the earth, that you would draw all men unto you. Say, so Koya. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up. We lift you up with our hearts. We exalt you, Lord, above everything that is going on in the earth, Lord. We lift you up. 
and everything else must bow. Everything must bow. Everything must bow. To the name of Jesus, for you gave us that name. And you said that name was greater than any name. And so we, we release it into the atmosphere. And we pray, God, that the winds would take your name to every city, every nation, every people. Open up the ears that they would hear the name of Jesus. we just pray in the spirit. I just feel like Holy Spirit wants to say some things that we've never heard before. He wants to do some things that we've never seen before. He wants to release He wants to take us from the natural into the supernatural. Come on. My, our sister encouraged us to pray in the spirit. In the West, we kind of think that's like 15 seconds and, and we get it done. Come on, that's a heavenly language. <laughs> Come on, I, we got to learn, you know, to just, just release our song in the spirit. Come on, right now. Thank you for your encouragement. Let's begin to pray in the spirit. Come on.
pray in the spirit with, or with understanding. Release your breath. Release your song to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I want to take you up, save God. I want to take you up and show you some things you've never seen before. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to speak in a language you've never heard before. So, yeah. I want to give you a sound that you've never heard before. Come up. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, no more. With the angels of the Lord are saying, holy. Holy, 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 holy. There's a sound of holiness that you've never heard before. Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, yeah. There's a place that the angels will join with us. They want to join with us. They want to worship with us. But we, come, we must come from the low place. The low place. Come on, let's just invite Holy Spirit. Listen, church, we, we can't do what we've done. We can't depend on yesterday. But there's a new day. And there's a move of God that we have not seen before. There's a new strength that is being released upon the people. My cup overflows. You are enough. You're more than enough. Enough, enough. You're more than enough. More than enough. 
cause the overflow. Not just enough for me, God, but we need an overflow. We need to overflow. When we go beyond the doors, God, we want to take an overflow of you. When we walk the streets, we want an overflow that will touch those, God, that don't know you. An overflow, God, where healing is being released upon our nation. An overflow. overflow. An overflow. Yeah, yeah, overflow. Your honey overflow, your sweetness, overflow. your goodness, overflow. your love, your healing, your deliverance. Let it overflow. Sheaya no moya. I just feel there's something on this. Our cry uh, for for the overflow. That's what we really should be calling Father Ministry, that which is overflowing out of us. When we come together as his ecclesia, something should transpire not only in this room, but in this city. The city should be shaken. So I'd like to, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to have 30 second kind of popcorn prayer, intercession. If you want to pray, I just like, just line up right here. And, and we're just going to pray for the overflow today over the city. Is that okay, my sister? Uh, you should be coming up right now. <laughs> I, I don't want you to get felt lead poison here. Oh, God. Uh, I don't feel led to pray. Come on. If you're here this morning, you're called to pray. So in the overflow, Father, we declare over Carlisle, and over the body of Christ in Carlisle. I want to read from John 16, 24. It says, up to this time, you have not asked a single thing in my name. In presenting, sorry, I can't read this. As presenting all that I am. But now ask and keep on asking. And you will receive so that your joy your gladness, your delight may be full and complete. Father, today we declare over this body, we declare over Pennsylvania. Father, we declare and we are asking again. We come, we come, we ask again. Father, we are asking and we come asking again in persistence. Father, adding our faith to our asking, representing all that you are. You are the I am that I am. Father, we are asking for Pennsylvania. We are asking for all tribes in this nation across Turtle Island. We are asking for your bride to awaken. Awaken your bride, God, to ask again in persistence. Keep going. Come on, others. Come on, quickly. Come on up. Come on up. Asking for you yeah. to overflow in Pennsylvania. Overflowing, come on. Thank you, Father God, for being the great I am. Thank you for the love that you pour down upon each and every one of us. Thank you for your sweetness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you do for us, Father God. I ask, Lord God, you touch each and every one of our hearts. And if there's anything within us that isn't right with you, Father God, then just show us and transform us, Father God, more and more into your image. Give us a heart after your very own heart, O oh Lord God. Let us have eyes to see and ears to hear 
Only you, Lord. Only you. Let us see you, Father God. I pray that your glory comes down. I pray your glory comes down upon this place. I pray your, gl pray your glory comes down and ripples out from this place across the nation, Lord God. Pray for your glory, Father God. Touch this nation, Father God. May your warring angels come down and fight this good fight with us, Lord God. Fight back the darkness across this land, oh Father God. We declare and de we decree this area for you, Father God. We declare and decree P Pennsylvania and all that beyond for you, Jesus. This is your land. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Softly, softly. Come on. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. You get the glory, Father. the angelic host here you are a welcome church how we need your ripple effect throughout this whole region yes father every tribe every nation every tongue that all should know that all should know we cry out for souls father souls father we proclaim isaiah 61 the spirit of the lord yah is upon us each and every one of us because the lord has anointed each and every one of us to bring good news to the suffering and the afflicted, Father. He has sent us to comfort the brokenhearted, to announce liberty to captives, to open the eyes of the blind. He has sent us to tell those who mourn that the time of Yahweh's favor to them has come and the day of his wrath to their enemies, Father. Oh, Father, we all have a reverential fear of you, not man, a reverential fear of you. Humble, repentant heart, Father. Each and every one of us, Father, bowing low before you, loving you back, honoring you, praising and magnify your holy name. Yes, Father, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give beauty for ashes, joy instead of mourning, praise instead of heaviness. For Yahweh has planted them like strong and graceful oaks for his own glory. Yes and amen. Thank you, Father. Spirit of the Lord has called. I just would like to read Psalm 149. Hallelujah. Yes, praise you, Yahweh. Sing him a new song. Sing him his praises, all his people. How oh, yes, spirit leads. O oh, Israel, rejoice in your maker. O oh, people of Jerusalem, exult in your king. Praise his name with dancing accompanied by drums and lyre. For Jehovah enjoys his people, and we enjoy you, Abba Daddy. <laughs> he will save the humble. Let his people rejoice in his honor. Let them sing for joy as they lie upon their beds. Adore him, O his people. Take a double-edged sword to execute his punishment upon the nations. Blind their kings and leaders with iron chains. Execute their sentences. He is the glory of his people. Hallelujah. Praise him. Oh, we are his glory. Come on, line up. I ask you guys to line up. Sing, oh, sing, oh, barren one. Come on, sing. Prophesy sing, out of sing, Isaiah 54. Oh, that the church again would, their song would be restored. Their heart's song of love would be restored. Restore the heart song, God. Come on, sing, oh, sing, oh, barren one. Come on, it's time for some of you to conceive. During this time, fresh manna, fresh glory.
Father, we thank you that last night there was a breakthrough here. We felt a breakthrough going from the bottom of the earth up and from the heavens down, Father, as the First Nations people broke through that wall. So, Father, I pray that there will be not an exchange, any type of man's interference would try to rebuild in those places. But that would be solid, what is done last night, that breakthrough that was, was brought forth as the indigenous people stood here last night and there was a breakthrough. So, Father, we claim that that will be permanent over this nation, over this city, beginning here in Jesus' name. Father God, we heard also about ethnicity, Lord. And there's so many opportunities for different ethnic groups to come in, Lord. There's the college. There's the law school. There's there's the uh, the war college, Lord. There's there's this area with people coming in because of court. There's the car shows, Lord. We have so many people from all over this nation come in, Lord. And yet, Lord, there is like a religious spirit. And I believe you showed me, Lord, the prison that used to be in downtown that they moved out of town, Lord God. But there's still that dark stronghold. So I just say in the name of Jesus, Satan, loose, loose the war college. Loose all these places where different ethnic groups come in. Lord, just, it's no coincidence, Father God, that we have all these different ways of different ethnicities coming into this town and we just declare all these ethnicities free from Satan, free from that demonic bondage that I believe is represented by what was there and is still there spiritually that we need to stand against in Jesus name. Let freedom ring Let freedom ring Come on, sing it freedom ring. Let freedom ring Let freedom ring, Let freedom ring. Let Father, you said you come to set the captive free. Set the captives free. And you came to give us liberty. Let freedom bring. Rule Shayana. Justice make your sound. Righteousness make your sound. Let freedom bring. Let freedom. Make your sound. Let freedom ring. Sing together. Thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for your, your waterfall of refreshing flowing over us, Lord. I thank you for that water flowing from your throne, Lord, just refreshing us, restoring us, and lifting us up, Lord. But I hear the sound of many waters coming together where one river ran before. Now many rivers coming together and creating a roar, creating a thunder as they come together and they're compressed together and flowing together and rumbling and bubbling and bringing life from your throne, Lord and coming together and creating a waterfall of your glory like has never been seen before, Lord. And they poured out upon your people. They're poured out upon you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that from your great mountain to the valley below, you're bringing the refreshing of your glory, the refreshing of life, to a dry and barren land. The Genesis factor just spreading out across the land, bringing new life. New life. And refreshing. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you don't despise small things, Father God. I thank you for connections, Father God. That we, we come here and connect with somebody that we don't even know, Father. Let the fire fall, to, a holy fire fall tonight, Father God. I thank you for the holy fire that will flow right out of this hotel, Father. It will affect the people on the street, Father. I thank you for breakthrough, Father. I thank you for life, Father God. I thank you that you gave me life, Father God. You healed me, Father God. I thank you for more healing in this place tonight, Father God. I say breakthrough, Father God. Let the rivers flow and let the seeds go out of this place. In Jesus' name, amen. kind of river. Love. We thank you, you 
of the living waters, God. We thank you, Lord, that you have made us strong, that you have you have caused us to be weak so that we may be strong in you. You have showed us where we've stood in our own strength and you've stripped us. For when we are weak, we are strong in you, Lord. If there's anything left in us that we are holding on to of our own strength, we ask that you strip that away in Jesus' name. Lord, let us be one wholly dependent on you like the oak that is planted by the river. Woo! Giving life in Jesus' name. Woo! There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Let the rivers come on. <laughs> Makes glad the city of our God. There's a river. You are the river. There's a river. You are the river. There's a river. You are the river. You are the river. You are the river. There's a river. You are the river. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of life. Flow life. River of life flow. River of life flow. Come on. River of life flow. Come on, let's just declare that. River of life flow. Come on. We're canceling river death right of now. Life flow. River of life flow. Come on, Ecclesia. River of life flow. River of life flow. Out of your belly will flow. Out of your belly will flow. River of life. And everywhere the water went, life came. From the throne of God, out of the sanctuary, flowed waters. The waters were ankle deep. Then they became knee deep. 
and the waters began to flow. Then it came to the waist. Oh, river of life flow. River of life flow. May we swim in the waters of life. Shayanubukuyananamahaya. May we sing in the spirit, flow in the river. Out of your bellies will flow living water. Shabbat 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 You can be in the water and still breathe. So we're totally in him. That's a prayer of Jesus in John 17. That they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I'm in you, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me I had given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them, you in me, I in them, you in me. Father, we believe. Help us with our unbelief. What else can we not do if we are one with you? We're one with one another. We're one with you. It's in that oneness that you can manifest yourself. So even as we come today in this place, you want us to embrace our differences and become one. We're so glad that we are different. Let's celebrate our differences, but we'll see that what we need in the other person because we all have a peace that we can bring. So let that word that Jesus pray. Be real in our life. We are sick and tired of knowing the word but not become the word. So we thank you today. Today is a very good day that we walk in that oneness. We just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I have my sister. She's going to read a passage. And then my dear sister, I'd like you to take the, the last 10 minutes and you know, coming from the city of brotherly love, we feel connected between Carlisle and there, and certainly as my birth city. I want you to take 10 minutes and just, uh, you know, prophesy, share your heart, take, take, that, take this time to release your, who you are in God, in, in the atmosphere here. I feel like we're quartermaster storehouse here for what's going to happen in Philadelphia. I feel we're, 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 we're building something here that, that we feel like we're going to take and it's going to be a unique relationship between, the, between this region, Harrisburg, Carlisle, and Philadelphia again. Something's going to be restored. Amen? So come on, read this passage and then we'll just kind of welcome our sister to release the atmosphere. Psalm 46, a river of peace flowing through the land. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. He cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Come on, he's so good. He's king. He's Lord. So, Mary, come here. Uh, 
say something about our dear sister that you know in the spirit. I just thank thankful that she was had a moment to come up and to be him. She's got a breaker anointing, and we're just gonna we're gonna tap into that in a moment. Can we just bless Dalzara? She's amazing. Come here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that Anna just prayed, our sister Anna just prayed, when we look at one another and we see many times the differences that each of us have and walk in, but really there really is a similarity because we are created from one common blood, one common source. And as we return to that source, we are then activating the very purpose for which we've been created, <laughs> right? And so I just want to say about Del Zora, she's a businesswoman. I remember, I think some time ago, I think I had said that she's like Priscilla, right? A businesswoman, a seller of purple. She, she really is working in the marketplace, but also an apostolic voice in the city of brotherly love and, and really a leader amongst her people. And where there have been much warfare i believe the father is answering the prayers in your persistence declaring all that he is the i am that i am in you and also in your people groups and as you have embraced the totality of who you are yes as an african-american woman but really as a native woman this is my native sister yeah and so we activate every seed and every deposit that the father had for her and for her people even now that there is a furthering and a furtherance of who he is in you sister and we bless you i honor you whoa and i love you we also just want to give you this as i just was drawn to this candle from israel it says prosper, pomegranate. So it says for the priest. I'll put that down there as you, your gift. But we, we bless you in Yeshua's name. That you will prosper. You do prosper. You are prosperous. I'll put yes, of course. Oh, here. This is a, a, um, a prophetic word on 0222-2020 about the, the apostolic chiefs coming into a place of um, leadership. They're taking their rightful role. And so I call you today as an apostolic chief because you carry the chief of all chiefs in your heart and in the prayers of your people. In the fiery prayers that you prayed just now, even now as you deposit wherever you go, I call forth the fruition and the original mandate that the Father had for you and your people, that there truly is a freedom and a liberation that is taking place in the supernatural for your people. Yeah, and so we call you forth as an apostolic chief, an apostolic carrying the mandate of the chief cornerstone himself for you and for your people. Amen. Yeah. So good morning and, and thank you. Wow. The Lord is an awesome God. Amen. So first of all, just I'm just honored to be here and just very, 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 very thankful to be here. We, um, when David told us about it a few months ago, or we had, um, we have a venue in Philadelphia, and the the um, the month of December was booked, and um, we got a call last week. Um, and rescheduled the person that booked the room for this week, rescheduled until January. And so I said, wow, <laughs> that's an opportunity that the Lord opened the door that he opened. And I text David and I said, is it all right? Can, can I still come? And he said, yes. And I'm just grateful to be here. Just 
Amen. And Mary Faust, this lady here, I watch her far off. And I do honor you, and I do love you so much. And I think you understand. I think that's what I appreciate about you. But, you know, I, I want to share this, this vision because um, I'm, I'm on an assignment in Philadelphia. Um, let me just give you a little backdrop. So my son was, my son died in the streets of Philadelphia, my oldest son, right? And I wanted to get as far away from Philadelphia as I could get. <clears throat> and so I moved to Delaware, Fair, Delaware. Bought this beautiful home. And I was knocking down walls, that's what I do. Uh, my mother says I should build a house <laughs> because I just, every house I go in, I just tear it all apart and put my personality in it. And, and when I had finished the house and finished the yard and put up a wall and all, just everything, the house totally beautiful. The Lord said, I was, I was, I came back to Philadelphia one Saturday and I was driving and the Lord said, I did not tell you to leave. I call you back to Philadelphia. And so that was um, September and um, I put my house up for sale in um, March the next year and it sold in May and I came back to Philadelphia and I just didn't know how to, what to, you know what I mean? Um, I was raised up in a denominational church and um, the Lord took me out of there and he said that because I had a preaching gift. I don't know if you've ever been to a black church. The black church, we get down, we get down. And I had that gift. But I didn't have a full relationship with God, the Holy Spirit, when I had that gift. And uh, the Lord said, I'm removing you out of here because you will become a church prostitute because of that gift. And so I left and didn't know where to go because it was a very big church, recognized all over the world, Church of God in Christ. And um, I found a little church on Fifth Street in Philadelphia with maybe about 30 members. And God said, you're home. And so I got there and um, we began to pray and the Lord just opened up that that channel, that door, that uh, my gift was received. And that's where I met Holy Spirit for real in a way that I didn't know him before. And many things happened. So, you know, I just wanted to give you that backdrop because um, one of the things that I'm adamant with is not moving in my gifting but waiting for the Holy Spirit because I've found him to be everything. Just everything. You know. And um, so anyway, um, I started this assignment. I felt the Lord called us to two and a half years ago um, gathering those that would come and to pray daily together. And so we took a one hour a day and every person took 10 minutes out of that hour, and we prayed. And we did that for over a year and a half. And, um, hi, baby. <laughs> That's my friend. She's been with me forever. <laughs> and, um, and so we, we did that for over a year and a half, and then I felt like I was, you know, I finished what the Lord said, and he said, no, we're going to continue in this, but we're just going to expand it. And so we took an hour still, but then he said, begin to call people to partner with you. And each person would take an hour a day. And it would be just created however Holy Spirit gave them to move. And so we have been on this assignment for over a year. Out of this assignment, the Lord was pulling on my heart to build relationship. He said, you know, we have our conferences, 
but we don't have relationship. We really don't know each other. And we come and we go and we come and we go. And he says, I need you to be an example of relationship. And this was kind of difficult in a way because I've always been a loner. I've always walked by myself. And so, you know, knowing a lot of people, but not in relationship, it's different. And so as I began to pray and build and I had to talk and had to communicate and had to, you know, the Lord began to build relationship in me and birthed it in me in such a way that I'm carrying, I'm pregnant with relationship, which means to me, it means that I carry no offense because you can't have relationship. I carry forgiveness because you can't have true relationship. There's, there's things that we, we carry and it aborts the relationship. And, and, and the church, we, 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 we're not that healing place that we should be. And so God says, you know, you got to walk this thing out. And so through the the election and the pandemic, seemingly the people that I ministered with for many years walked away because of what I believed. And, um, but God kept on saying, but you're going to build relationship. And so I came out of myself in this and just kept on praying and kept on touching, kept on praying and kept on touching until Finally, I could sense the fire of God on it. And people, the, you could feel the walls coming down and you could feel people wanting to connect and people wanting to be a part. Not, um, not for anything other than we want to be the body of Christ. You know? And so as, put that there, um, we got into this part of uh, uh, the year. Another, now God had already spoke to me and told me to, do, to bring the people together. Didn't know how. And then many people don't want to come together because of the COVID and because of this and that. And another event rescheduled. Right? And so the Holy Spirit said, take that weekend. And I said, take that, take that weekend and call all the people that you know. Because you're going to host a gathering. Then he gave me dreams to support what he was saying. And gave me visions. And I'm a dreamer. But I never dreamt the way I dreamt these dreams. I want to read it to you, and then I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I'm just going to read part of what the dream, how the dream went. I'm, I, I wrote this letter to several people and sent it out to them. And first, the, the, the vision I seen was men. And Jeremiah 4.31 says, For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail. This, this comes out my first dream. And the anguish of her that bringeth forth her first child. The voice of the daughter of Zion that wails herself or bewail herself. That spread her hands saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is wearied because of the murderers. And I would like to, sh and then I say I want to share this vision. So I say a few months ago, um, I had several dreams. The first dream, I was on an island which was seemingly covered with tents. And I was taken into this tent which I realized was a birthing tent. 
And I was positioned on the floor of the tent. And I was examined. And I heard someone say, the womb is ready. And so I'm used that, that because it was so real. And the Lord said, you're in the womb. You're in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the womb. And the womb is ready. And so I, I just, I kept that dream to myself for many weeks. And I began to, you know, get fuller understanding. And then I had a second dream. And I had two dreams in the same night. In one dream, it was a car. I was in a car, and I was in the front seat as a passenger. And the car was moving very fast. And it was, um, and so, so fast that those, that, uh, those of us that were in the car, we were holding the doors so the doors didn't open. That was the second dream, but the first dream in one night. The second dream that I had in that same night, I had um, many people, we were in the woods. And I recognized a lot of these people because I prayed with them for many years. And as I was looking around, I noticed one intercessor standing by a running stream. And suddenly gold like popcorn began to pop up out of the ground and everybody began to run towards the gold and began to pick it up but the time I by the time I got there it wasn't a lot of gold and I and I said in a loud voice I want some more gold and the others began to look at each other and they began to share their gold and so I felt like the Lord was saying one of the favorite scriptures that I have is that the earth is in travail. And I'm putting this all together with the birthing dream and the movement of the car and then the birthing of the, the, the gold and by the stream. And I just packaged that before the Lord and just began to pray. And then in one of my prayer times came this dream, this vision. And God began to say, Jeremiah 30 and 6. Now let me ask you this question. Do men give birth to babies? Then why do they stand there, ashen-faced, hands-pressed, against their sides like a woman in labor. And so this is what came to me in that, in this time of prayer. And then, and then, um, I heard the Lord, I heard the voice of the Lord. And the Lord said to me, he says, I am, I, I have created a sound. And the sound that I have created is going to birth the new man. And I sat there for many hours. You know, God says some things and you just like, huh? And um, he said, go to Genesis. He said, the man was created by the sound and the manifestation is what we see. And I began to read. And he said, and I heard his voice, let us make man. And as I was hearing that, right in front of me, a man was being created. And he said, the sound of Zion is creating the man. And the man is holding his loins. 
Because the man is getting ready to bring forth. And so when I was sharing this with someone, he said to me, he says, Dell, he said, man is the former and woman is the birther. He says, and God is forming a new man, but out of that new man will come the daughters of Zion. And they're going to birth into the earth. He says, that's what you see. And so as, as I'm yielding to this, he says, gather the people. Because the birthing pains, there's people all over that are holding, men holding, because they feel the pressure of the travailing of the earth. And the souls and the movement of the Holy Spirit is mounting up. And the women are being positioned. He said, now, he said, now, the position of the woman must change. Because in times past, we have believed that we would lay on our backs to release or bring forth. He says, but that's why, hear the prophetic, you have, they have brought wind because they were not in the correct position for the birthing. And so he says, why do you think that I have trusted you with so many tears? Why, have, why do you think that I've trusted you with so many disappointments? I'm trying to get this all together. And I, he says, because I allowed you to be broken. Hold that. Then I seen the Liberty Bell. And I seen the crack in the Liberty Bell. And then I heard the Lord say, the Liberty Bell was placed in, in times of war, it was placed, it was hidden. He says, but it's time now to put your attention on the Liberty Bell. Because the brokenness that is amongst you, me, you, those, the remnant. You've been broken in many places, in many areas, but you carry the sound of liberty. I wish I would get this thing right. I hope you guys are following me. There's a sound, I'm going to bring it all together. There's a sound of brokenness amongst us. But that sound, God has created a new man out of that sound. And that brokenness, God said the liberty bell would ring again out of brokenness, out of humbleness. So the church is being broken. The people, the ecclesia is being broken. Now some will yield to the brokenness and some will fight against the brokenness and some will be hardened against the brokenness. But those that will allow me to create in them because we are in a creative season, the sound of brokenness, hold that, Jesus blessed the bread, he broke the bread, and he gave it to the disciples, and the disciples gave it to the people. And God says, I'm giving you something, but it's through the brokenness that it's going to be released in the earth, and you will get back into position, the correct position, you're going to bear down and you're going to press in and press past your pain and press into a position 
to bring deliverance and to bring freedom into the earth realm. He's calling the ecclesia and he's calling the daughters of Zion. He's calling the men that have been in a very peculiar place. But through the pain, the sound that is being birthed is going to shift this nation. And so God says, your assignment at this time is to share my love, tell people to get into position, the right birthing position through your brokenness. It is a creative sound. It is a sound that, it's a sound that we never heard before that is getting ready to produce the kingdom of God in the earth. So what we have seen in times past, it's not that. What we have heard in times past, it's not that. But it's one that will allow God to break them and align with him to birth into the nation. And so as you pray for Philadelphia, pray that we would yield to the brokenness, that we would yield to truth, that we would yield to righteousness, that we would come in alignment, in relationship, and that we would abort offenses and unforgiveness and anger and hatred and racism, that we would turn our back. And as Mary said, we are one blood. And until we can see it like that, God has graced me to be with a lot of people groups this last year. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Who am I? He said, I'm showing you one blood. One people, a people that will call on the name of the Lord and believe that God will do the exceedingly and the abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. God says he's challenging us to go beyond what we have ever asked or think. What you think is too small. What you've seen, it's too small. God said, I've got a grandiosis that I want to release in the earth realm. And it's waiting for the birthers. It's waiting for the sound of brokenness. You, me, we are the Liberty Bell that will ring again. I'm done, David. Thank Good. you, Lord. Stay up here for a sec. Give her a hand. Come on. Anna, come on, come on, Anna, up here. Stand with her sister. It's just kind of interesting that that our dear sister came with Anna. You know, I, I'm, th I'm thinking of you know, and the word about being positioned for that which God is going to bring forth. I recall the story of Anna and Simeon. Of course, Simeon's name means to hear, and you have heard the words of the Lord of what's about to be released, and Anna comes from her, her, her inheritance of Asher was from the olive groves of Israel, the anointing oil. And, 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 and God positioned Anna and Simeon in, in a, and I'm not, don't forget gender specific, where he's positioning like he did them, a, a remnant people that are positioned to, they were positioned to receive Yeshua when he first came in baby form to the temple. His first encounter. How about a people that are positioned to receive him again in our day? So I want to pray. Father, we just thank you for the for, for Anna and Simeon, Lord God, the, the anointing that they represent, Lord, in the midst of religious activity, in the midst of injustice and, and, and darkness and oppression. The Holy Spirit was didn't stop the Holy Spirit from positioning 
those by worldly standards would not be can even considered for the priesthood or ministry at that time. They were past the age that people would look at them and say, no, no, they're, uh, we can't use them. Those, they're past their prime. But God said, no, I am positioning them right to receive the true ark of the covenant, Yeshua, in the house. So, Father, we thank you for what you're about to do in Philadelphia, Father God, that the bell will ring. And, Lord, we're thankful that you use cracked bells, Father. You use the brokenness, Lord God, and lives that are laid down before you, Father God, that you would birth in this womb, Father God, of the nation. Father God, your purposes and plans, Father God, for Turtle Island, Father. Release the global song of the Lamb. Release the song of the Lamb out of Philadelphia, God. Release that sound, God. And even now from Carlisle, Lord, Lord, we're just sounding the alarm. Get ready, Pennsylvania. You are about to see a release, Father, of a sound of liberty, a fresh sound of freedom, a sound where the church will come together, not in a safe zone at the bottom of a mountain, but a throne zone at the top of the mountain where your glory resides. Lord, there would be a fresh release of glory warriors and love warriors that would go forth on the earth, Father God. Release them now, God, and use this offering here today in Carlisle. You said you sought a man in Ezekiel, but you could not find one. Come on, just present yourself. Lord, here we are, the one new man, God. Jew and the nations coming together. Father God, you don't have to look. Here we are, God. Use this moment in time for your glory. Oh, in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen.